Okay, hello and welcome back to Land Rover Toolbox Videos. Okay, I've got a question for you. Do you know what the voltage is of a charged battery? Think about it, and I'm going to throw some figures at you. It might not be the answer that you thought it might be. Right, so a charged battery is a 12.72 volts. A half discharged battery is 12.4 volts and a fully discharged battery is 12 volts. If you see a battery that's 13.6 volts, it's because it has something called surface charge on it. Right, so I'm going to show you a battery that's been sitting a while, and this is 12.8, okay? The excess is actually a surface charge. Right, so that is a charged battery. When the alternator is running, it will up the voltage in the system. It will push out 14.4 to 14.9 volts out of the alternator, although they say it's a 12 volt system. Okay, now this has surface charged after it's just been charged, and you can see it's at 13.10. If you put a little load on it, after a while the surface charge will disappear. As you can see here on this multimeter, I've turned the keys on, and you can see how quickly that will actually drop down and give you the proper battery value. Okay, so it's turned back off again, so we nearly charged there. Right, okay, we're going to have a look at charging and batteries in general, and we're going to look at voltage drop. Right, so I have a battery connected here, and I have something that's at 12.42. Is this a bad connection? No, I've started the engine and it started to run. The alternator is going to decide what sort of voltage it's going to put into it. As it slowly climbs to charge, it will then eventually go up to 14 volts. Should be at 14.7, 14.8 or 14.9, depending on the system. On these diesel 300 TDI defenders, this is what I'm talking about, petrol engines, slightly different. You need to check up the data in the workshop manual to give you what the charging rate is of your alternator. Right, so this multimeter, I have an inductive amp clamp here. And what you can do with this is clamp it around a cable, then read the amperage that is passing through the cable, or should we say the current. Presently, the alternator is now charging the battery by putting 25 amps that way. You do not need an inductive amp clamp unless you have a lot of money. A simple voltmeter like such, which has DC and AC volts, is sufficient for auto electrics testing. You'd probably be more used to putting positive to negative and getting a voltage reading, i.e. from two terminals on the battery. Well, in this tutorial, we're going to go further and check for voltage drop. This means we'll be using, for instance, two positives, i.e. positive on the alternator output terminal to battery, and then onto another positive terminal, i.e. to the starter motor, for instance. We're looking for voltage drop, and I'll show you how this works. Right, so basically you look at a component and it will tell you that it's something like 11 point something volts. Okay, you're missing some voltage. Right, this component here, 11.13 volts. The battery, you know it is at 12.8, so we are missing 1.5 plus volts. So there's a drop either in the component, in the positive line or the negative line. Voltage drop can happen on battery terminals, and we're going to go through basic batteries first, and I'm going to tell you that obviously you remove the negative terminal first on a battery, and then the positive terminal, okay? This reduces sparks. What I'll also say, if you happen to be removing the positive terminal, just give it a little tap on there. If there's any sparks, then you've got a parasitic current draw. That's with the ignition off. Cleaning battery terminals, okay, they should be nice and shiny clean. Now I'm using a brush on here, you could use a wire brush or something like that. Basically any grot on the terminal. You also have a cutter which you can buy, positive and negative terminal, and the lugs as well. 
This one is actually quite aggressive, but it does clean the terminals. Now, the better these terminals are, the better the contact is, and you don't want any voltage drop on the terminals, first of all. Nice smear on the terminals of petroleum jelly or Vaseline. Don't use silicon. And this basically is good for a corrosion protection. Once it's clamped down, you can then use some more of this Vaseline to just seal the terminal a bit better. Keep an eye out for any corrosion on battery terminals. They need cleaning straight away. Right, so we have a charged battery and we're looking at touching the terminal posts of the battery first of all, which is the center of the battery, the lead lugs here. And we're going to get a reading of 12.93, 12.92, and then test the lug to see if it's the same. All right, so move it over, and the voltage should stay the same on the multimeter. All right, so 12.93, okay, that's perfect. Yeah, so no voltage drop on the terminals. So basically, when we're running the engine, um, we're looking at 14.57 on a charged battery. Okay, now this is on the positive and negative of the terminals respectively. So we're reading the voltage at the battery. Terminals at positive on red lead and black to negative. Right, well basically what I use is some clamps here and this leaves it hands free. You can see the clamps uh, for clamping on terminals. Right, so the voltmeter basically is volts DC. This is auto ranging and if you notice when I wiggle the leads you get something called a ghost voltage. This is nothing to worry about. Right, so if we look at the battery where it's the charge is ending up, we're getting 14.661 or 6 to 14.6 say in uh, volts and what we're going to do now is put the clamp this clamp on to the alternator um, battery post which is such which sends the charge to the starter motor okay now what I'm getting is a fault well I should do the uh, lead clamp just fell off I will say that the negative is connected to the battery at this point and we're getting 14.75 so we're getting a drop of about um, 0.15 of a volt between the system um, from the uh, alternator to the battery that's actually not that bad but what I want to do is test this cable here which is alternator to starter motor which then links to the battery cable so I'm going to put the negative part of the multimeter onto there and then the positive is still connected to the alternator which is the battery post as you can see here so that's the output of the alternator so we're going to check this cable and basically what you'll find is that theoretically you should get zero volts um, in reality obviously not but what we're looking at is 0.03 to 0.04 of a volt drop which is next to nothing okay so let's analyze this we have a battery voltage of 14.61 volts this is the end of the line for the power for the alternator okay so the alternator output is 14.77 volts and this is taking a reading from the terminal of the alternator to the negative of the battery right the difference or voltage drop is uh, 0.16 of a volt which is absolutely minuscule in comparison what is actually allowed right so we'll go a little bit further the alternator cable which we've just tested the actual voltage drop is 0.04 of a volt so the starter to uh, battery cable must be a voltage drop of 0.12 of a volt all well and good now i've got something to tell you about this so don't switch off yet right basically the allowable voltage drop in a cable is 0.5 of a volt any more than that and then you're looking at corrosion in the line because corrosion causes resistance therefore you get a voltage drop this is also indicates that there could be a fault with the component right with an alternator if it has a voltage drop and it's not sensing the battery voltage correctly what it will do is start putting out more charge if it puts out too much charge it can either boil the battery 
or even cause an internal fault in the alternators. This is why we check it this way. So next time somebody says, oh, it must be the Earth's, you don't know. It could either be positive or it could be negative or the component itself. This is a way of checking.